Hi, my name is Steve Raynard. I head up business development here at Hammock. And I've been invited by Charthouse to give you a quick introduction to who we are and what we're all about. So Hammock as a product was built by landlords for landlords. All of our founders own property. And we're just looking for an easier way to manage how they, their portfolio is set up. So Hammock's been designed to remove any laborious spreadsheets or any manual tasks that you have to complete, either to find out information for yourself or any information that you need to provide to your accountant. So how do we do that? Well, we take your property, we take your tenancy, and we take your bank transactions, and we put that into the Hammock platform. Once it's in the platform, we can automate your bookkeeping, we can populate your tax statements, and then provide you some property insights. These property insights include things like real-time notifications on rental payments, whether they're on time or late, or in some cases, missing. We can provide you with reminders for key documents and key deadlines that need to be completed. And we can also do things like provide your profit and loss statements, rental yields, EPC certificates, and much more. If you want to find out more, we'll happily have a conversation with you, but speak to your representative at Chart House directly, and they can put you in touch with us. But now let's move on to the webinar to show you how Hammock works in a lot more detail. So this is Hammock. So what, this is obviously pre-populated, but one thing that I would just add in here is if you're a Charterhouse client, we do the full onboarding and support for you. So we will help you get your, obviously when you first sign up to Hammock, the data isn't there, it's all blank and needs added in. We will do that session with you. It takes only about an hour, which isn't a lot of time. Uh, and then all of your data can be put into Hammock and it will look just like this. So the first thing you will see is that we take your property information. You can just quickly click Add Property. When you do that, it asks you all any relevant question that you might need, such as, is it a HMO, the address, number of tenants, and which portfolio you want it to be added to. And I'll touch on that in a bit more in a little while. You can also add in your valuations, purchase price, and mortgage balance, which, again, is not only useful for you, but useful for your accountant to spot any areas uh, that they need to make you aware of. And then once you're happy, you can quickly add a property in. The property has been added. And then if we go back to the property screen, there's now four properties on there. We always get asked this, can I change this picture? Absolutely. You'll see it pulls it straight through off Google. Um, you can go into it and twist it bounds. If you want to look, make it look exactly onto your house, um, you can do that. It's a little question, but we get it asked all the time. From this overview screen, you can see income, expenses, profit, and any arrears. And that comes from your banking information, which I'll cover with you shortly. And also occupancy levels. If it's just a solid green, then that means there's only one tenant. And obviously, if there's multiple tenants, it shows you how many of the, the rooms are filled. Also from here, for those who've got lots of properties, you can search on an address or you can search uh, by a portfolio and look at obviously any of this information on which tax year you want to look at. Where we start adding more value to our landlords is we can show them their P&L by per property. And on the overview screen that you'll see later on, we show you that as the total portfolio. We help you with your mortgage information. And obviously if that needs to be addressed or looked into, that's an area that you can either discuss with your accountant or easily share with a financial advisor. And we also do live valuations on your properties to help you with tracking the things like the loan to values. And again, we pull that from multiple sources and I'll show you that on the overview screen. And then finally, we also keep you up to date on any changes in regulation that are coming in. So one of the things that we've added in recently is EPC certificates for if they're available for a property. So in this particular property's case, if I look at the most recent certificate, you can see the current rating is D, but the potential rating is B. We've, in, we've given you some indicative costs on the areas and how much it would be to get that rating up and estimated annual energy cost savings that you could make by implementing these changes. Why this is important is if you're not aware, then in 2025, all rental properties need to be up to at least level of C. So this is really useful information. And we're going to start giving you notifications to tell you about that. So once properties have been added in, what do we then do? Well, we make sure once the property's been added, are they under the right portfolio? 
So in my demo accounts case, I have two properties under a personal portfolio, which I own 100% of. I have one property under joint ownership with my partner. And I have one property in limited company. So however you've got your individual estate set up, you can put them into the right portfolios. And then what that will do is not only show you uh, how each portfolio is doing, but then it will also put that data into the right tax statements and information on that, and meaning that you're only taxed accordingly to the relevant transactions. And then finally, we capture your tenancy information. For those eagle-eyed of you um, to have seen earlier on the property screen, there was one property that was in arrears. Now, coming onto this tenancy screen, I can see that John Smith is responsible for that arrears. And by going into John, I can see not only how long they've been a tenant and their, and their contact information if it's been provided, but the start date, the end date, when they were last paid and what amount of rent and address the property that they're in. And then it makes it really graphical to show you what's been discussed. Now, in this example here, you can see that in July, they missed to pay rent altogether, but clearly they've had some communication with the landlord, agreed to overpay to bring that down that arrears. And then since then, they've been very reliable in paying in full, well, actually overpaying every subsequent month. And the software has tracked those arrears to bring them down accordingly. So it's just a really easy way to see not only how each property is performing, but how each tenant is performing. And also in here, if you do get a tenant, like maybe in this case, that said, I'm going to struggle to pay you this month, you can see how they've done historically. Um, or if you were giving them a reference to somewhere else, this is a quick thing to say, yeah, do you know what? They're in a property of mine for 22 months and they're paid, in, they're paid on time every time. The software also at this point can give you notifications. So notifications is a really strong feature within the product. So in my dad's case, he owns two flats with three tenants. And he just likes to be told on the 25th, three notifications, have they paid? If any tenant hasn't, he also gets a notification to say they've not paid and therefore it will mark it as late. And then obviously one of the key, a key critical thing is if you know early that someone hasn't paid, that's the absolute best way in order to ensure you get paid something by getting that early notification. If you chase it early, you've got a much higher chance of receiving it than if you discover a few weeks later that that money's not gone in. So where do we get this information from? Well, Hammock utilizes open banking, which a lot of you might be familiar with, but for those of you who aren't, that just means that you connect your bank account. Now, to be clear on this, it's an electronic version of your bank statement. It doesn't give full two-way integration with your bank. You're not exposing us to have access to your bank. We can't take money out of it. We can't do anything like that. Neither can your accountant. It is purely an electronic version of the statement that you already get in paper format. We connect to all major banks, so 99% coverage across the UK, and it will pull the transactional information through. There is a secondary option, which is you can set up a dedicated hammock bank account. So this is an e-account that will have a account number and sort code, and that will just be in here, and you can move all your property uh, transactions into that. That's something that's proven very popular because a lot of people, and still to this day, actually, the majority of our clients on Hammock still use a personal bank account for their um, property transactions. That's not a problem, but some now like to think of their property as a bit more professional, run it a bit more like a business, and therefore have a dedicated account to ensure that everything to do with the property is managed through that. If that is the case, you can just add it in here. You can run multiple accounts. A question we always get is, I bank, I've got several accounts. Can I have several accounts connected at the top? Absolutely, you can connect as many accounts as you like. The third thing that we always get asked here is, if it's not on my bank and I say buy a new key or pay for something in cash, can I add in manual transactions? You absolutely can. It's over here and you can add in a transact, just a single transaction or if it's a recurring transaction where you're paying, say, £10 a week out for something in cash, you can set that up as a recurring transaction and the software will track it and automatically add it in for you. So this is what, it look, so this is what the transaction screen looks like. Um, one nice thing about Hammock compared with other software is if you are a landlord that's running your um, property estate through a personal account, 
you don't have to categorize every single line on your bank statement. And again, going back to my dad, he's probably got 60 to 80 transactions across the year, which are to do with his flats. And then he's got about 2,000 transactions to do with everything else he's bought. He can ignore all of those. They just show like, this is some dummy data. You can see everywhere it says click to track. The software is completely ignoring all of these and is only picking up the ones that have automatically been categorized. At the top here, you can filter. So if you want to filter via all the transactions for a particular property or tenant, you can. Different accounts, if you have them. Transaction types, categories, date from and to, and amounts. Just to show you at a very high level how the software can help you with a couple of issues that we get a lot. One thing that the software does is if you do use a letting agent who takes their fee and pays you the balance, the software will pick up on that and automatically gross up the sums for you. You can see that here. On this particular tenant, which is 8 South Street and Rob Little, he pays £400 a month in rent. The letting agent has taken their fee, which is 53.65, and therefore it's left with 346.35. When we set this up, we said it was a letting agent, and we, you can either set the amount or you can set the percentage, and the software will calculate it. So when on the bank statement this amount has come through and the software was looking for the 400, it knows that that is for this property and this tenant. It will automatically top up the rent and then deduct the fees. And then it will do that on an ongoing monthly basis. So it knows to look out for that in subsequent months. A question that we also get asked, though, is, well, I have a discretionary amount with my letting agent. What happens if they've had to pay a couple of hundred, you know, they've billed me a couple hundred pounds for a washing machine so that it's not three, four, six, it's a much lower amount. Well, based on that South Street, if I just find a lower income amount, so let's, let's select this one. If I put that as rental income to the same property, you will see that the software has picked up on that and said, this rent is less than expected. Would you like to create an expense for the balance? If you select yes, you can add notes, you can attach receipts, and so that you've got a reminder or your accountant has got a reminder come tax time on what that was and what it was for with the receipt attached. What you can also do is if you have uh, an income or an expense, and it might be, let's try and find a higher amount on here, this one here, £40. If I wanted to put that as, so in this case, is insurance, but I want to split that transaction. So if you want to split something against two properties or just put it across a portfolio, you can. So if the insurance is a gross amount for all your properties, you can just select, put it against my portfolio, and it will divide it evenly. If you want to get a bit more granular, though, I could say £30 of that is my building's insurance for this property and click save. And then I can go £10 is building's insurance for this property and click save. Goes green. And then you've been able to split that transaction uh, £30 to one and £10 to the other. If I click save and finish tracking, then every month, if that amount is on there again, the software will automatically look for it and split accordingly. The final thing you can do in here is if you want to start mid-year, which a lot of people do, and therefore you want to go back and look at historical data because there's a lot of reports in here and it's useful, the further back you go, the more accurate and more precise we can be with presenting the data back to you. With open banking, some of the bank accounts go back up to three years. So if there's a particular rent or a particular insurance, there are two features in here. One is called search and track and one is called view matching transactions. By selecting either of those, you could say select this transaction here, then do search and track. And if that is the same um, reference and amount every month going back, you can just bulk select and it will automatically categorize that same amount for every month going backwards. So you don't have to, it doesn't start today and go forwards. It starts today, but can go back as well up to three years very, very quickly. So they're the two main things, the property and tenancy information that then feeds off the banking, well, how do you then present that back to you and give you some property insights? And we do that in three ways. The first way is on the overview screen. So you saw earlier on the property screen how we did a PL, which was for the property. What you now have is a PL for the overall portfolio. I mentioned 
uh, that software uses a variety of different sources to pull accurate or, or tries to be accurate valuations through. If I go into this, you saw I added a property earlier. It's already gone and found me a valuation for that. If I'm happy with that, I can leave it as is. If not, I can change it and I can click save. And it will update my loan to value. If I go into this and look at all, it will show me all my valuations. And if I want to get a new estimate for an existing property, I can select the number of bedrooms, select the property type, click get valuation, and it goes away and looks at recent sold information to try and provide you with the most accurate uh, loan to value and current valuation. So you can use the software to do that, or you can go and get your own valuations, but then it will show you your loan to value. For some people, that's something they track a lot. For others, like my dad, he will never look at that. You see your occupancy levels, you see your upcoming payments. So these are the dates and what rent is expecting, the software is expecting to see. We show you your rental yield on your current valuation or on the purchase price a lot. Uh, if you're an accountant on the call, you like to see it on the current valuation. If you're uh, the, the landlord, you typically like it on the purchase price because it's a higher gross yield. Um, what rent to collect and then obviously any arrears. So this is the overview screen. We then have a series of reports. Now, these might be something that you don't look at, or it might be something that you look at at an annual review or quarterly review with your accountant. But there's a variety of different ones. Obviously, director's loan only appears if you've got, if, it's, if there's a limited uh, setup in your portfolio. Um, general ledger, income statement, net cash flow, rent roll, and tenant ledger. So you can select any of these. And then if you wish, you can filter via a particular property. And you can see as I switch between properties, just how quick the data updates, particular portfolios or particular dates. And all of this can be downloaded and shared if you want. And then the last section, um, which is on the browser, is the document zone. Now this, when we do surveys and ask landlords what their favorite feature is, this is always the favorite feature. It always saddens me slightly because this is probably the most simple feature in the product. But if it's the one that gets the highest uh, happiness levels, then great. What the document zone is, is it's exactly that. Um, you can upload any file you like. You can then link that to a property, a tenant, or a portfolio. So this could be insurance on a property. It could be something to do with your portfolio. So it could be the accounts, the tax, it could be anything you like, or it could be something to do with a tenant, whether you've served them a letter or something like that. You can select the type of document it is. So, you know, gas safety certificates. A good example I always share is in my dad's uh, flats. One had an August gas certificate, one had a November. August comes around and he sends the engineer to the one that was due in November. And then he had to send the engineer to the one that was back in August because he'd sent him to the wrong property. That wouldn't happen here because he would know which property is due when. You put the expiry in so that when you go to the documents, you can see here this one in red. This gas certificate for South Street is coming up on the 24th of Feb. It will remind you at four weeks, it will remind you at two weeks, and it will remind you at one week as standard. But by going into the notifications tab, you can change the frequency. to. So if you're someone that likes to be nagged, uh, it, the software can nag you. If you just want a single reminder, you can also have that. Even if you don't want any reminders, you can also select that. But we would recommend you use it to some uh, extent. I've touched on receipts previously. There are two ways to use get receipts in. You can just um, upload them in here. So just have them as a file, have them scanned. If it's something that you've been emailed as an attachment, save that attachment to your desktop and then just upload it into here. The other way, which is something that just to cover with you, a lot of landlords, don't you, they will never see a hammock look like you've seen it today because they 100% use the product on their phones. So we are full iOS, so every Apple device uh, and Android, you can just download the hammock app and the information you've seen today is all presented in there. You still you get your notifications. You can take photos of your receipts. So as you're going along, if you have an expense or you receive something in the post, take out your phone, take a photo of the receipt, and it will put it into here.
And depending how you want to work with Chart House, you can just take the photo and put it into this list and then they can categorize it and link it. Or you can go to the particular transaction that the receipt is for and attach it to that. It's what we would recommend. Find the transaction that the receipt is for. Add a few notes to remind you uh, as well as your accountant. Click save and then it's in there. And we've got custom categories that uh, enables you, if you don't just want documents and receipts, these custom categories, you can add as many tabs along the top here as possible to make it a bit more like a filing cabinet for you. So if you want certain documents, because some people, if you've got lots of properties, having them just all on one screen here can be quite a lot, even with the filters. So you can just break them out per property along the top, just there. And that's an overview on Hammock. Two things to finish with, how do we support you on an ongoing basis? We always get asked this. There are training at the top, so this will take you to a screen here. What we've done with our training, we make it quick, fun, and interactive. So all the videos, there's no 30, 40 minute training things you have to sit through. You can just find what you want to do. So how do I add a property to my portfolio? And it's a one minute video. How do I connect to bank account? It's a 40 second video. We make them as short as possible and as quick, as snappy, so you can go in there, find what you want to do, and then get back on with your day. What we also have is live chat at the bottom. So you can see that two of my colleagues, that's Harry, and this is James. People say, are these always file photos? Absolutely not. These two people are having two of our employees. Um, they're on there, and it's an under two-minute response time at the moment. So that's live chat. We also, because some people like it, we do have a phone line as well. I've had an email while we've been on thanking me and saying that they like it, but asking me how much is it? Well, hopefully my screen has changed over. This is that, how we price it. You, we don't price hammock on number of users. We price hammock on the number of properties in your portfolio. So if it's a husband and wife and they've got three properties, we don't, doesn't matter if it's husband and wife, um, it's five pounds a month because it's one to three properties. Four to 10 properties is £10 a month. And anyone who's got more than that, it's £20 a month. Now, that's our pricing. One thing I'm pleased to say is, um, very generously, Charterhouse have said, if you are a Charterhouse customer uh, or client, sorry, um, Hammock is completely free. So if you like what you're seeing on the call today, we can get you set up in Hammock at no cost. And you can have Hammock on an ongoing basis with Charterhouse at no cost. So that would be my call to action. And then finally, once you work, are working with Chart House and we've got all this information that you've seen, we've got the transactional data, we've got the reports, we've got the portfolios, the tenants and the properties. How do we help you with that? I'm going to show you this screen, but this is a, a screen that you will probably work on with your accountant. If you go to tax statements, you can see my three portfolios broken down into personal, joint, and limited. I can go into these and it will show me what an overview of my tax and my forecast of what my tax is going to be. These are the eight boxes. So when we talk on making tax digital, which a few of you have already mentioned, um, these are the boxes that need to be submitted to HMRC. We will handle that. Uh, with Chart House. And if you want to see what makes up this amount, if you select it so it goes bold, you can see all the transactions that are linking to that particular subtotal. Now, this is a portfolio where, as you can see, Jane owns 100% of the portfolio. If I go into one that's a joint ownership, just to show you a comparison, you can see that I'm, I'm currently as Jane, because that's what's highlighted over here on the right, and Jane owns 50%. So it's showing me what the total portfolio's liabilities are, but then the tax for just my 50%. And if I switch to Peter, it shows Peter's. Now, the numbers haven't changed because it's both only 50%, but you can see here, it also takes, into a, it takes your base rate of tax into account as well. So it's doing all these calculations to try and give you the most accurate estimate possible. All this information can be downloaded and all this information can be linked. So if you use other pieces of software 
uh, or indeed if you are working with Charterhouse and they want to consolidate this into a uh, consolidated set of uh, tax for you, they can do that. But the key thing is here, this information is uh, it's live, it's on the go, you can track everything as you go, every time you add another transaction, all the other updates and feeds through and filters through. And that's an overview on Hammock. Obviously, we have reviews from all over the all over the <laughs> the web that come in, and there's so many little things that we see, which is you know, thank you for the software. I noticed it was only by going through my transactions I spotted these three expenses that had slipped through the net. So there was you know that I wasn't going to claim for, or by having this, I was able to before the deadline see what I considered something that didn't either look right or was a concern, or so then I was able to ask my accountant, able to ask my your mortgage broker, whoever, and it, it shows you and the whole point of Hammock is we try to tell you useful information and useful property insights before they have a problem. And that's exactly what we try to solve for. So effectively, where are we with this? We are going to provide complimentary hammock training through hammock. Uh, hammock will, this will be completely free of charge and effectively free setup. This is all covered on the basis that for the next 10 signups, it will be completely complimentary while Charterhouse will be footing the software costs and hammock will be providing free support in setting up the hammocks dashboard. Effectively, with making tax digital coming in, it's taking a snapshot every quarter. So, and at the year end, we do a consolidation with everything. So, if you want a more accurate tax payments system, then you would want to be putting your dividends and everything that you've earned each quarter in so that you haven't got a massive tax bill at the end of the year. But effectively, if you don't, at the end of the year, there will be a consolidation which brings everything together and you're taxed on that at the end. But effectively, it's as in, the point of it is that as you earn, you document everything in real time on Hammock. Yeah, it's great that we're going to get a, you know a new client on Hammock. Um, I think you're the one thing I would just add in there is you're exactly right. Um, one price, you know, you saw the pricing that you would pay if you came to us direct. The other th price I didn't share on here is the actual setup cost is £79, um, which again, Charterhouse are covering. So um, yeah, if I if I uh, was to inherit the, uh, you know, I hope not, but if I was to, if my dad was to give me his flats and properties tomorrow and say, uh, here you go, son, I will be going to become a Charterhouse a client as well. So uh, yeah, how would I become one? So that would be my part. So effectively what we'll be doing is after the, uh, seminar will be sending an email mail shot to everyone on there if you click on the link to join hammock through our dashboard effectively you'll come onto our system and hammock will introduce you and set you up on uh, hammock give you all the free training and we can then take you on board and provide you with everything that you need Uh, no, no. Um, I was uh, down in our London office yesterday, uh, and one of the guys who uh, does the onboardings, um, you know, he, he got off a, he came out of a meeting and said, uh, um, you know, that I said, oh, your meeting went a bit longer than normal, and he went, no, we were setting up eighty-four properties, so uh, no limits, um, as many properties, uh, as many tenants. There are no, there are no new, and of course, because we've added the filters, you can obviously very quickly filter to find the one that you want to find. Yeah, absolutely. So you can toggle a tenant on and off. Um, what you can also do, so by default, when you go into the tenant screen, it only shows you tenants with an active tenancy. Um, but then you can also, if you want, you can just say, show me all. 
uh, you can show bonds with your ears, um, or you can then look at your archived tenants um, or active with arrears. So, because uh, obviously sometimes people have still got arrears, but they're no longer, they, you know, they've just they've just left and no longer a tenant. So, yeah, absolutely. We say the data is all st uh, stored in the obviously in the cloud. It's all encrypted in the cloud as well. So all this data is encrypted, um, but nothing gets deleted. So it might not be visible to you on the screen, but it's always saved and backed up behind the scenes. Um, so, yeah, great question. Great question. It's actually normally one of the ones that I answer as I go, and I haven't this time. So uh, mm -hmm. the, the one time I've not, I've been caught out. So, yeah, good question. Um, we update the product every 14 days. So there are you'll see new things come in uh, on, a, on a regular basis. We do not charge for new features. So it's as simple as that. So things like the EPC piece, that came in at the start of the month, uh, well, probably just about over a month ago now. Um, as and when things change, we we develop them, we add them in, we do not change, uh, we do not charge you for the additional features. Yeah, so when it comes to the expenses, all, what we've done is we've taken, without getting too technical, we've taken all the categories um, that make up the you know SA105 and so on. And then we've en re engineered it backwards back to the users. So the categories are all fixed, but there are uh there are hundreds of different options in there. So it, the idea is you, you should never ever need to add a category because there will be the category in there. Um, you can obviously search if you know what you're looking for, because obviously trying to find it in 100, you can start typing what you're looking for and it will find it. But it handles you know, replacement of item, new item, is it capital expenditure? Whatever, whatever you're looking to do, you'll see that. And we help you obviously with this when you're doing the setup, but all the categories, there are hundreds of options and you can categorize it however you like. And obviously what that means is whatever you categorize it as, that then has an impact on how you're going to be taxed on that later. So you can, um, the answer, this, this answer is probably um, two parts. So can you use it for commercial properties today? Yes, but is it ideal? No. Um, we have a commercial properties um, like uh, additional add-on on our short-term roadmap. So later, I'm trying to give an answer to this. It would be, uh, uh, I'm in sales, so obviously I'd like it tomorrow. Um, te our tech team are a bit more realistic, so I would think um, in the next six months would probably be the best estimate I could give you. We will have a dedicated commercial add-on, uh, not add-on, add-in, because uh, there won't be the initial cost for it, which will have a much more rounded um, commercial arm. So um, basic, we can handle basic commercial today, but I would say if you do have a lot of commercial property, you are probably wait, best waiting for that to come out within the next six months. The point here is the more accurate, if we're using softwares that are providing with the accurate information, then that's happy days. Uh, for on our side, there's less work for us to do. So fees wouldn't go up if everything's put on hammock and the information's all accurate. The point for us to consolidate everything is generally our normal tax return fees. So if we're doing the tax return, we'll gather all the information that's relevant. So if you've got your rental properties, you've got your business, you've got your dividends, you've got everything, then we provide a fee based on a bespoke quote for your needs. So fees wouldn't go up because you're using hammock. That's not the case. We would prefer you did because what's going to happen with the additional requirements of making tax digital, if you're using the software, if you're using Excel, for example, we're having to then do all the work manually to submit your accounts quarterly. Whereas if you're using a software like hammock, instead of doing that four times, uh, instead of manually doing your accounts four times a year, we're effectively just reviewing and submitting. So it's a bit more simpler for us. And we will be providing uh, bespoke quotes to everyone nearer at a time because if we're about a year away from that at the moment. So watch this space.
Yeah, and I think one of the things we hear, you know, when I go to all the accountancy shows and everything else, it's um, this is the way to keep the prices, the you know, the, the, the only way to keep the prices sort of what they are today. If, you know, from the accountant side, and this isn't, you know, I am on the side here of the accountant. It's not, this isn't the accountancy industry that's changing. This is the HMRC change. Um, what they're doing for you once a year, in most cases, they're going to have to do four times a year and then a fifth one at the end to make sure that the first four were correct. So, you know, no matter what industry you're in, if you price today for doing something once and you have to do it now five times, what what impact in whatever job or industry you're in now, what impact would that do to your pricing? That's exactly what the accountancy industry and, you know, and firms like Charterhouse are, are, are going to have to face. That's an awkward conversation. What we do is we provide a way to automate a lot more of what you do today to hopefully prevent that conversation even having to take place. Yes. Yeah, you can you can add as many users on to your license as possible. I say we don't um, we don't charge on users. You're just charged on properties. So you can have as many uh, portfolios set up as you like. So obviously, I think in my example there was two under a personal one, one which was a husband and wife under a joint one, and then on the limited one, uh, I don't know what was in my example, but you can have whatever users you like under each portfolio. So Hammock is purely for portfolio landlords from my understanding. Zero is a more complete software, which will take into consideration if you've got a trade going on through there as well. If you've got other activities through the business, that's where zero comes into it. Whereas if you're just looking at your actual portfolio of properties, rental properties, hammocks where we would go with it. But if you're using zero for various other aspects of your business and you've got uh, dividends going through you've got all of your you've got a trade that's where the difference is so if we've got people who are using who've got rental property income we won't be using zero for that we'll be using hammock because this is bespoke for landlords and it's a lot cheaper i mean it's free compared to zero we are charging 22 pound 24 pound now a month plus that so it's a case of let's look at what you're going to be using the software for and then we would advise you uh, one way or another I'd probably just add in as well, you know, um, uh, what Jem said there is absolutely correct. Um, same for me when I worked at QuickBooks. QuickBooks does 100 things well, but obviously you don't need 100 things. Every individual needs about six or seven of those things. So there is a, it's much, much more complex. And the average setup time on, on generic bookkeeping software is about four to five hours. Obviously with Hammock, it's one because we just do half a dozen things very well as opposed to 100. So we're niche and are dedicated for portfolio landlords, as, as Jem said. What I would say, though, is we have a lot of users who use both. Um, they, you know, If you are a plumber and you have a plumbing business where you are sending invoices and you are running that plumbing business, absolutely, QuickBooks Zero Sage, that's the thing you need to be using for that. But then if you also, as part of your pension or, or for or an investment or for whatever reason, you own three properties to provide a secondary income, that would be run through Hammock. And we see a lot of that. That's quite common. Yes, it will. Um, it doesn't. It's optional. Um so it's uh, so we don't insist on it. So I mean, you saw that um, that property that I added as part of the demo. It took thirty seconds to add, and um, we did that. We do that deliberately because we want you know for those people that just want to put the minimal amount of data in and be up and running. We we it's designed for that. But yes, you can put all that extra data in, um, and also it will start. Um, the software will also begin producing alerts for you. So again, if we know your original purchase prices and mortgages. We look at that. So if you are remortgaging and we see something that doesn't look quite right, we're just about to bring in alerts 
um, function that will sort of alert you to a problem. You know, if it sees something that it perceives as a problem or doesn't look quite right, it will alert you and then you can bring your accountant in to say, why is this? Flag this. What do I need to do? No, so there is a so the way that the soft the way that you connect HMRC, it's not done on email. Um, there is there is a digital link. Um, so that's why um you know your Excels of this world, uh, they don't have digital links, which means that they can't submit via MTD for MTD. Um, so it's all done digitally where our software is synced straight into HMRC. Um, the functionality and the, how we're going to do that. It's all on the accountant side, so that that is not available. Uh, the filing for MTD is not available to landlords. Um, it's purely a it's functionality that is available in the software for accountants. So the accountant checks it. If they're happy, they can submit it for, on your behalf. But um, it's not something that the landlord does. It will be indefinite. Simple answer. Thank you for attending. Uh, if any of your answers didn't get, any of your questions didn't get answered, please do, uh, of course, drop me an email. We will be sending you uh, a follow-up email with the recording as well at some point. Uh, but again, if you do want to join and become a hammock user, then do follow the link and sign up on our dashboard and someone, one of uh, Steve's esteemed colleagues will be uh, getting in contact with you all. And of course, if you want to become a Charterhouse client, follow up on my email and uh, we'll be in touch. I'm more than happy to have a complimentary hour uh, meeting with you all to discuss your options. Uh, Steve, did you have any other final words? No, just look, thank you ever so much for inviting me to uh, come and speak to you, not only uh, the people who've joined us live today, but I know that this has been recorded to uh, to send out to, to your wider client base. So just thank you for having, uh, thank you for being a partner of Hammock. Thanks for all the good work that you do. And uh, we look forward to onboarding as many of your clients as possible in the coming weeks. Perfect. Thank you very much. And just to remind everyone, it's free for the, it's free, a complimentary training and uh, sign up for the next 10 clients. So this will be going out there. So the next 10 will get everything complimentary, including the training and set up all through Hammock. So do uh, make sure you get on top of that as soon as possible. Be Thank one you. of the first 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, first 10, definitely. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everybody.